Hello, my name is Charles Watkinson and as well as other tasks I head up the R&D function here at Coracote which sometimes involves reviewing specifications for both ourselves and our customers. To specify a coating it's necessary to have information. What is the coating's purpose? What's the service duty? The environment? What is the temperature? What's the component? And so on. The more relevant and detailed the information, the better. Often there are several choice possibilities, with performance parameters and cost coming into play. Sometimes the customer specifies what must be used, and here is where I come across one of my pet hates, formulation specification. Formulation specification says it must be epoxy, or maximum pigment amount should be 2%, or should contain not less than 65% resin, etc., rather than detailing performance criteria. Let's look at some examples. The polyester resin shall be either bisphenol A or isothalic. A wax-free coating is preferred. Where wax is unavoidable, the wax content shall be as low as possible. Maximum content shall be 0.1% by weight. The glass flake content shall be 20% minimum by weight. The thickness of flake shall be 5 plus or minus 2 microns and particles shall be 20 microns to 200 microns in any surface direction. A maximum deviation of 4% is allowed. Extenders such as silica flour, mica or talc shall not be used. The pigment content shall be 3.5% maximum by weight. Let's look at this first specification. Type of polyester. Two specific types are mentioned, bisphenol A or isothalic. There is a huge variation in cost and cross-linking density between these two materials and both resins can be of good or poor quality. So what is it that we're using for our product? Wax-free coating is preferred. Why? Waxes are used in these coatings to prevent poor or uncured surface resin and monomer loss. Some coatings don't use wax, but performance may be better with it. The statement is made because overcoating properties could be affected. It's assumed adversely, whereas in reality, overcoating properties may be advantageously affected. It's all down to correct formulation, testing and understanding. The minimum glass flake content shall be 20% by weight, etc. Extenders such as silica flour, mica or talc shall not be used. Why not give us the whole formulation? Actually, the specified glass flake doesn't exist and the specification for the minimum glass flake percentage doesn't work either. Take a look at this graph. The only difference between these materials is the quantity and flake thickness. If you look at the red graph, the 5 micron thick flake, you can see that the lowest permeation rate is with circa 23%, equating to 3 by 10 to the power of minus 4 per inches. Whereas, if you look at the blue graph, the lowest permeation rate is at only 18%, equating to 4 by 10 to the power of minus 5 per inches. It's almost a magnitude better. Look at the next one. Generic lining, pure epoxy. Does that mean no filler, no thixotrope? Modified epoxy. Modified with what? There are many different types of epoxy. It's like saying to the waiter, I want food. The next one. Technical name, high build paint finish. That's really technical, isn't it? Volume solids, approximately 62%. We must have circa 62% solids, but any solids can be used. I'm sure you've realized by now that specifying a paint or coating in this way is neither appropriate nor clever. It's very restrictive, often precluding the best materials from being used, but at the same time being wide open and may mean you get rubbish. Specifying performance criteria is much better. Then, let the supplier or manufacturer suggest the paint or coating. You could specify an anti-corrosive coating for
for the internals of a carbon steel oil gas separator containing sour crude at 95 degrees centigrade with seawater, methane, carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide operating at 45 bar G. Expected lifespan 15 years. Coating is required to be resistant to well stimulation chemicals, have a maximum bond strength of X MPA, MVT rate less than X, elongation to break less than X percent and to withstand cold wall effect. Other test pass criteria can be used but care has to be taken to specify the correct test, pass criteria and methodology. It's no use specifying a mandrel test on a coating intended for 10mm thick steel, whereas it's absolutely necessary for a coil or can coating. These are some of the specification criteria that could be used. This list is not conclusive nor exhaustive but intended to give the specifier the basic format for specifying an anti-corrosive paint or coating. To conclude, specification should be performance based. The performance criteria should be sensible for the service duty. The test criteria should match that requirement and not be overly arduous. Accelerated testing should be treated with great caution as increased concentrations and temperatures may fail a perfectly suitable product. Correct specification allows the best product to be chosen at the best price. And finally, beware of copy and paste.